Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily chat GPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the app of Google Calendar and seeing how we can leverage AI with Zapier plus Google Calendar. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning watcher, welcome again. Make sure to like the video. As you already know, you're going to get a bunch of value out of this. We are diving into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier and showing you how AI can be integrated with every single one. So you're going to learn a ton here. But for now, let's go ahead and create our Zap here. And as always, you're going to be able to find the Zap in the description down below. We're going to go ahead and rename this app to Google Calendar Integration. And before we dive further into this tutorial, let me know if you prefer to have my little bubble here in the corner of the video rather than me jumping around. I've been getting a lot of comments recently requesting this. So let me know in the comments down below which you prefer, whether you care a lot, you don't care a lot. Just let me know your opinion on this because, you know, going from here on out, if people on this channel who are avid watchers of this channel want me to be more structured where, you know, my face is down here so it's less distracting, let me know about it. To start off, we are going to create a zap with the intention of basically making a new calendar event. Then we're going to grab the data from that calendar event. We're going to use GBT in order to reformat that in a way that is productive and then send that through an email. Obviously, the last stage and the last step of this zap could be a slot channel. It could be Basecamp. It could be any CRM you use. So whatever context you find best applies to your use case, go ahead and do that. Start off where it's going to say trigger. And we're going to go ahead and choose the trigger of Google Calendar. From here, we're going to do an event of event created, new event. We're going to continue here. We're going to choose our account and we're going to do our courses here at Web Cafe AI. We're going to go ahead and continue again. And then we're going to do the calendar specific to us, which is going to be the courses at webcafecommerce.com. We're going to go ahead and test this trigger. And right now, no event should show up. We're going to go ahead and create a pseudo event so we can play with the data. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just create a pseudo event here. And we're going to call the event uh, client lead for AI restaurant. And then we're gonna go ahead and we can add a guest here. Let's just say the guest is, you know, example at biz.com, add a Google meeting conference here. We're gonna add a location. We're actually not gonna add a location. We're gonna add a description here. We're gonna say, uh, we are meeting for the first time. Client is interested in AI automation for their restaurant presence. So whatever notes you wanna add here for whatever context you're doing, make sure it's front facing. A lot of the times when someone's using some type of, you know, scheduling tool such as Calendarly or Google Meets, there already be context here. I'm just adding the context here because I wanna show you, you know, from the start to, st uh, start to finish how it'll look here. Doesn't like that because it's a fake email. So I'm going to add our main email here at Web Cafe here. Let me grab that. I'm just going to add this. I'm going to add this guest. And we're going to go ahead and say save here. And we're going to go ahead and to send the invite. Regardless of anything, we're assuming that we're using something like Calendarly that would have automatically done this for us. And then it would have grabbed the data anyway. So jumping back over here, we can go ahead and test this again. And it should be able to find this event. All right, perfect. So as you see here, we got our event all the way to the right. And it'll be able to grab all the data that was associated with that event. We're going to say continue with selected record. Our next block here is going to be chat GPT. And then with chat GPT, we're going to do conversation. And okay, continue here, continue here. And we're going to enter in a lot of input variables. First being that I want to up this model to GPT-4 due to the fact that we're dealing with more of comprehension rather than data manipulation. The next thing I want to do is you can now do, which is really cool. Um, is set the max amount of tokens or the output. So for this use case, let's go ahead and say 300. And then obviously we can go ahead and add a memory key, which shows consistency with the outputs here. So let's just say we're gonna say new EV for a new event. And then we can go ahead and make our prompt. We're gonna say based off this AI automation consultation call, we do semicolon and we're gonna go ahead and put the title semicolon and then we're going to go ahead and make sure we put description do semicolon here and we're going to do the title parentheses client 
lead form. So typically when you do uh, a scheduling, you'll have the individual's name as well. So I kind of missed up on that, but we'll go ahead and proceed anyways. We're gonna say generate a um, three bullet point summary of how our services can apply. And then we're gonna add a context block here. And our context block is gonna be simply, we provide AI automation services that range from 1,000 USD to 3,000 USD a month, depending on the complexity. So here's one thing I wanna point out here, which is important. I'm doing a very general context block here. This is a very general prompt here. We're not getting very advanced here due to the fact that I just want to show you like how this all connects data wise. But if you're running a company yourself, you want to add as much information here as possible to give the much amount of context to the AI. So every time it performs a task for the underlying event, it knows exactly how you want the data structured. So maybe this is encompassing the fact that social media, typically it's uh, bracketed in this charge. Customer service is typically bracketed in this charge. Time frame, um, stuff like this, this will ensure better outputs. But from here, we can go ahead and hit continue. And then we go ahead and test this action. All right, so as you see here, with the limited amount of input data we provided, it has the three main bullet points, one being enhanced social media presence. Our AI automation services will effectively manage and optimize your restaurant social media channels. Second being streamlined operations. Implementing AI automation in your restaurant process will help increase efficiency, reduce manual tasks, and optimize resources. And finally, personalized customer experience. Utilizing AI-driven analytics, we will provide personalized recommendations. From here... You can go ahead and grab that and as i said before you can use gmail you can use slack you can use Basecamp. so whatever your communication channel is with your internal team that is what you'll typically do here and then we're going to go ahead and just do send email we're going to continue here we're going to choose an account and we'll just choose our main account actually we'll choose our courses account so it shows up and i can show it on your back end we're going to continue here make sure it ensured that perfect and we're going to do uh basically send email to ourselves all right, perfect. So we added to ourselves. You could obviously CC people within your team. You could BCC people within your team. You can add the underlying name it's coming from, the reply to, and essentially let's go ahead and input a subject here. We're going to say new call created. And then we can go ahead and put our body as the assistant response message. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that this can handle HTML. This could be very useful in specific context. Maybe I want the underlying conversation output from ChatGPT to be formatted in HTML. Maybe you want to do, you know, additional stuff that allow you to structure the email a little bit better rather than plain text. For now, we're going to go ahead and keep that at plain text. And then we're going to move from here and add a signature, add a label, add an attachment. But what we have done so far is sufficient for our needs. So we're going to go ahead and test that action and see what that looks like on the back end. All right, perfect. So new call has been created. We send the email or whatever CRM you use. And now we got the three main points that we may want to bring up in that specific call, whatever the underlying context is. Typically, when individuals fill out lead forms for client calls, they'll request certain information such as employee count, industry uh, services interested and so on. So obviously you can tailor these chat GPT prompts to be more specific to your underlying context. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at Web Cafe AI. If you're interested in learning more about AI automation and how to leverage that with ChatGPT, Zapier, and all 5,000 apps, check out the playlist at the end of this video as you're going to be diving into everything when it comes to AI and automation. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.